Hello everyone, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, back again for another video. This time I'm doing it on Cambridge Secondary 1 Checkpoint for Mathematics Paper 2, October 2017. Calculator is allowed. Let's start. Question 1. A. Round 17,642 to the nearest thousand. So nearest thousand means the next place value is the hundreds. In the hundreds place, we have a 6, which is greater than 5. That's why... We can add 1 to the thousands digit, so it will be 18,000. B. Round 2.1486 to one decimal place. The first decimal place is 1, and the next one, which is the second one, that's 4, which is less than 5. That's why we don't need to add anything. We just get rid of the other parts after the first decimal place. So 2.1. That's the answer. Question 2. This is a diagram of a net of a cube. Calculate the volume of the cube. The volume of a cube will be the side length of the cube cubed. So the side length is 5, and then we just do 5 cubed. That's equal to the volume, which is 125 centimeters cubed. That's the answer, 125 centimeters cubed. Question 3. Here are the masses of three bags of flour. What are the total mass in kilograms? So half kilogram will be 0 0.5 kilograms. And 75 grams is going to be 0 0.075 kilograms. Now, we just do 1.2 plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.075. We will get 1.775 kilograms. That's the answer. Question 4. In this diagram, AB is parallel to CD and ECD is a triangle. Work out the values of A, B, and C. So the value of A is just the same as this angle here because of alternate angles. It's kind of Z-shaped, so it'll just be 45 degrees. For angle B, we have corresponding angles over here, kind of inverted F-shape. That's going to be 80 degrees because these two are equal. And angle C, you know that angles and triangle are up to 180 degrees. So we know A is equal to 45 degrees. So it will be 180 minus 80 minus 45 using this big triangle here. We know these two angles, we need to find C. So that will be 55 degrees. That's the answer. Question 5. Calculate the remainder when 3, 4, 5, 6 is divided by 7. So let's actually divide it. 3, 4, 5, 6 by 7. We'll get 4. 4, 7, 4 is a 28. Subtract, we get 6. We can bring down the 5. We'll get a 9. So that'll be 63. Subtract, we get 2. Bring down the 6. And we have 3. 21. And we get 5. And this 5 is the remainder over here. So the remainder is 5. That's the answer. Question 6. Ahmed and Blessy each have a 6 sided dice. They each throw the dice 120 times. The results of their throws are shown in the bar chart over here. One of the dice is biased. Take the name of the person you think has the biased dice. Ahmed or Blessy. Give the reason for your answer. The answer is actually Blessy because we can see over here that in Ahmed's dice, all the dark ones, the bars are nearly equal height, right? All of them are around 20 over here. But then for Blessy's dice, there's too many ones and then these values are a bit normal. And then there's two less sixes. There's not even ten sixes in there. So you can write the reason as because there's a very obvious thing to say. We can see that it's much higher than the other bars for Blessy. So you can say that Blessy's dice has rolled an unnaturally high frequency of ones. Meaning, the number of ones which Blessy's dice has rolled is too much compared to normal. That's the answer. Question 7. Rotate the rectangle to 180 degrees angle center C which is given here so we rotate this 180 degrees it'll become 
the point over there so we can just mark that if you rotate this 180 degrees it'll go over here it's like that so it goes down there you rotate this one 180 degrees it'll go like this this point over here so you can just mark that and you rotate the last point over here 180 degrees it'll go all the way down there you can simply mark that and we simply connect the dots now like this that's the answer if you didn't understand my more complicated method i'll show you a bit simpler way so we know that this is the center of rotation and we're rotating 180 degrees from this to another shape which is actually this one here so let's take point one and then see the distance from this to c this is one in the x-axis and two in the y-axis so that means we just repeat the distance one x again and then two y again and then we get the point there that's all same for here one x four y one x four y you get this point for this one 4x 2y and then 4x 2y you get this one that's the corresponding point and for this one 4x 4y 4x 4y you get there which is the fourth point and with those four points we get this shape here that rectangle and that's our answer by the way this method only works for rotating through 180 degrees it does not work if you're rotating to 90 degrees in any direction there's a different method for that one anyway that's our answer question 8 a Convert these fractions to decimals, 13 by 16 and 23 by 32. Let's get our calculator out. Here we are. 13 divided by 16 is equal to 0 0.8125. And 23 divided by 32 is equal to 0 0.71875. B, write down a decimal between 13 by 16 and 23 by 32. So you can write down any decimal which is in between these two numbers. I'll be writing, for example, 0 0.8. It can be any decimal which is greater than 0 0.71875. And let's say the number is x. It should be less than 0 0.8125. It can be any number. I've just written 0 0.8. That's the answer. Question 9. Here are the first five terms of a number sequence. A, write down the 8th term of this sequence. We can see that we subtract 3 each time to get from one term to the next. So this is the 5th term. We subtract 3 once to get 8 as a 6th term. And then we subtract 3 again to get 5 as a 7th term. And the 8th term will be 2 when we subtract 3 again. So 2 is the answer. B, work out the nth term of the sequence. So there's a formula we can use to find the nth term. Because this is a linear sequence, we add, uh, subtract the same amount all the time, which is in this case minus 3, we subtract 3. So we can do a plus d into n minus 1, where a is the first term and d is the common difference. Or in other words, the term to term rule. So that will be equal to 23 plus minus 3 into n minus 1. So that will be... 23 minus 3n plus 3 because minus 3 into minus 1 is 3 so that'll be 26 minus 3n that's the answer question 10 bag a and bag b each contain three colored cubes oliver takes a cube from bag a and a cube from bag b complete the table to show the nine possible outcomes for the colors of oliver's two cubes over here so color cube which are in bag A are blue, yellow, and red, three of each. In bag B, we have green, white, and red, three of each. So blue is repeated three times here. Yellow is repeated three times here as well. All we need is red, because it's only done twice, but we need three times. So we can put red there. Now for the second part, we've done fully green. Now white is two times and red is done only once. So we need to do another white. We have blue and white, red and white. All we need is yellow and white. But we have a yellow and red here. So there's only one other blank space for white to come with yellow. It's over there. And the other two are simply red. That's the answer. Question 11. The diagram shows scale drawings of two of the world's tallest buildings. 
One is the Pedronas Twin Towers, which is in Malaysia. The scale is 1 centimeters to 50 meters in this drawing. And for GRES2 power station in Kazakhstan, scale is 1 centimeter equals 40 meters. Take to show which of these buildings is tallest in real life. The Petronas Twin Towers or GRES2 power station. Show clearly how you worked out your answer. First, you have to measure the length of these lines since they show the height in centimeters of the scale drawings. If you measure it correctly with the ruler, you'll get 8.5 centimeters and 10 centimeters here. Then you have to multiply it by the scale value. Over here, you multiply by 50 to get the actual value. So for Petronas Twin Towers, I'll write PTT height or PTT real height on H. That'll be 8.5 into 50. And that'll be, if you do it correctly, 425 meters. Now for the GRES2 power station, I'll cite as GRES2. So the real height for that, that'll be 10 centimeters multiplied by 40 meters because that's the scale written over here. One centimeter is 40 meters. That'll be 400 meters. And 425 is greater than 400. So the Petronas Twin Towers PTT is taller. That's the answer. Question 12. Angelique travels between two towns 200 kilometers apart. This graph shows information about her journey. The graph over here is a distance time graph. Write down the times to complete this sentence. Angelique is traveling fastest between dash and dash. So traveling fastest means the slope must be very steep. So the steepest slope is over here, which means between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock. That's the answer. Question 13. The cost of cloth is directly proportional to the length. A 3.2 meter length of cloth costs $38. Work out the cost of a 2.4 meter length of cloth. So 3.2 meters is equal to $38. That means 1 meter is equal to 38 by 3.2. We just got to calculate that out. 38 divided by 3.2, which is equal to $11.875. And now we need 2.4 meters. So we just multiply that by 2.4. And when we do that, we get the answer as 28 dollars that's the answer you have to buy a zero as well and that's the answer let's go to the next question which is question 14 let's like the quadrilateral in the mirror line we have a mirror line here and the quadrilateral is over here this point stays the same since it's already on the line so for this point the nearest point on the mirror line is over here and this is one unit diagonal i'll write d1 apart so we just make that in the opposite direction, which will be over here. So we have two points already. The third point, using a similar method, this is two units diagonal, so you make it the opposite direction. It'll be over here. And for this one, it's actually three and a half units diagonal. So we bring three and a half again. It's over there. Now we can simply connect the dots like this. And once you've done that, that's the quadrilateral we need. That's our answer. Question 15. The pie chart shows information about tickets sold by an airline on Monday and Saturday. Find how many more economy class tickets were sold on Monday than on Saturday. So on Monday, there were 200 tickets sold. And on Saturday, there was 120. On Monday, it'll be equal to 360 minus 90 minus 90. Whole thing into 200 tickets. Y360 minus 90 minus 90. We know that first class and business class is right angle, which is 90 degrees. So you subtract that and multiply by 200. So 180 by 200. And also we have to divide by 360 because we're getting a fraction of 200 tickets. So we are having 180 degrees, which is half of the pie chart. Cancel out, we just get two, so 100 economy class shall like EC. Don't confuse this. The two is for this. It's not EC squared. Now for Saturday, 
we can write Saturday. We have 120 tickets sold and 240 degrees out of the full thing is economy class. So it would be 120 into 240 degrees, which is 240 by 360. You can cancel this to 2 by 3. Cancel this to 40 into 2, which is 80 economy class tickets. And now we can see that the Monday tickets sold is 100. And for Saturday, it's 80. 100 is greater than 80. But they're asking, find how many more economy class tickets are sold. So you have to subtract 100 minus 80. That'll be 20 more. And that's our answer. Question 16. The number of instruments played by 50 goals is shown in the table. The number of instruments, 0, 1, 2, 3. Number of goals, 14, 19, 11, 6. Calculate the mean number of instruments played by this ghost. So that'll be 0 into 14, which is just 0, plus 1 into 19, plus 2 into 11, plus 3 into 6, divided by the total number, which is 50. Let's get our calculator out. We have 0 plus 19 plus 22 plus 18. We have 59 by 50, which is equal to 1.18 instruments played by the ghost in the mean average. That's the answer. Let's go to question 17. Question 17. A. The table shows the time it takes Chen and Aiko to type some words. Chen can type 23 words in 40 minutes and Aiko can type 7200 words in 2 hours 30 minutes. Complete the table. So we need to find typing speed. 2 hours 30 minutes is equal to 150 minutes. So typing speed will be for Chen 2020 by 40. And I'll just write this for Chen. That'll be equal to, just get our calculator out real quick. Is divided by 40 we get 50.5 words per minute WPM so 50.5 and now for ICO it'll be 7200 by 150 let's do that we get 48 words per minute that's the answer let's go to part B Mia can type 45 words per minute. Work out how long it'll take her to type 1,300 words. Give your answer to the nearest minute. So we do 1,300 divided by 45. And let's get our calculator out once again. 1,300 divided by 45. We get 28.88888 minutes. I'm just going to find this for the nearest minute. So it'll be 29 minutes. As given the question nearest minute, that's why I did that. And that's our answer. Let's go to question 18. A, B, and C are numbers. A is to B is 4 is to 1, and B is to C is 3 is to 2. Write a number in the box to make the sentence correct. A is dash times the size of C. So A is to B is 4 is to 1. This can be written as 12 is to 3 when you multiply both sides by 3. Now, A is to B is to C can be written as 12 is to 3 is to 2 when we merge it. So, A is to C is equal to 12 is to 2, which is equal to 6 is to 1 using these values. And that means A is 6 times the size of C. That's the answer. Question 19. Hassan wants to find out what type of hard drink people like best out of tea, coffee, and hot chocolate. Design a table that Hassan could use as data collection sheet to contact his information. So... We can make a table, just like this, and then make three columns. One for a drink, one for a tally, and one for frequency. So let's make a heading column, type of drink, or type of hot drink. And then we have tally, and we have frequency. Like that. And now we can just write tea, coffee, hot chocolate and divide into separate rows. I'll just divide these rows in black. And once you do that, that's our answer. Question 20. A. Draw a ring around the inequality represented on the number line over here. We can see that at minus 4, we have a black circle or shaded circle, which means it has an equal design on it. So it can be one of these two. 
equal to sign means it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. No equal sign means less than or greater than. And speaking of no equal sign, for the number two, it's a white circle, which means there's no equal sign. There's nothing shaded in the circle. So the answer is the first option over here. We solve the inequality. Y by six is greater than 1.5. That just means Y is greater than 1.5 into six. So Y is greater than nine. That's the answer. Question 21. The diagram shows the floor plan of the stage at a theater. The stage is made from a rectangle and a semicircle. The rectangle is 16 meters long and 5.5 meters wide. Work out the total area of the stage. Give the answer correct to two significant figures. So the radius of the circle will be 16 by 2, which is equal to 8 meters, because 16 is the diameter and radius is equal to diameter by 2. So area of circle is going to be pi r squared, and that means area of semicircle is going to be pi r squared by 2. So that will be pi into 8 squared by 2, which is 64 pi by 2, 32 pi, and let's get our calculator out. 32 multiplied by pi, we get 100.53 meters squared. So we got the circle area, and it's actually semicircle, not circle, but anyway, now we can go to area of rectangle, about rect. So that'll be equal to 16 into 5.5 because this is length, this is breadth. So length into breadth is the area of the rectangle. So 16 into 5.5, we get this as 88 meters squared. Now the area of the full theater, which is these two combined. So 88 plus 100.53, which is equal to 188.53 meters squared. And the two significant figures, this is 190 meters squared. That's the answer. 190 meters squared. Question 22. A bottle contains 3.6 liters of water. Water drips out the bottom at a rate of 20 milliliters per minute. Work out how long it takes for the bottle to empty. Give your answer in hours. So 3.6 liters is equal to 3,600 milliliters. And in one minute, 20 milliliters is gone from the bottle. So we can find what, uh, how much is the time taken to empty the full thing in minutes. 3600 zero, zero by 20. That'll be 180 minutes, which is equal to 3 hours. That's the answer. Question 23. One solution of the equation x cubed minus 2x is equal to 40 lies between 3 and 4. Use the method of trial and improvement to find the solution to one decimal place. You may not need to use all the rows. So we have when x is 3, x cubed minus 2x is 21. It is too small because we need 40. And for 4, x cubed minus 2x is 56, and that's too big. Now let's start with doing 3.5. Let's get our calculator out. x cubed minus 2x, so 3.5 cubed minus 2 into 3.5, and that's just 7. That's... 35.875, which is too small. So we need a larger number. So we can do 3.7, for example. 3.7 cubed minus 2x, which is 2 into 3.7, 7.4. That's 43.253, which is too big. Now we can do 3.6. So 3.6 cubed. Minus 2 into 3.6, which is 7.2. We get 39.456, which is actually not too small. It's slightly small. Now we have all the decim one decimal place done. So which out of these is the closest to 40? It's 39.456, right? So the answer for x is 3.6 to one decimal place. That's the answer. Let's go to question 24. The original selling price of a shirt was $45. In a sale, the shirt's value to $32.50. Calculate the percentage reduction. So that'll be 45 minus 32.5 by 45, 
multiply by 100% because we need the percentage of the reduction which is the difference between the start and the end and we divide by the original multiply by 100% to get percentage that will be equal to 12.5 by 45 into 100% to get our calculator out here we go 12.5 divided by 45 multiplied by 100 which is equal to 27.8 percent decrease to one decimal place exactly 27.777 percent but it's all right that's the answer let's go to question 25 the table gives information about the parliament of new zealand and of spain in 2014 as given here darling around the country that had a greater proportion of women in its parliament new zealand or spain show how you worked out your answer in New Zealand, the proportion is 39 by 121. I have the total for women. And in Spain, it is 126 by 350. We can just do this in decimal now. 39 divided by 121, which is equal to 0 0.32231, da, da, da. And now 126 divided by... 350 that'll be equal to 0 0.36 which is greater 0 0.36 is greater right than 0 0.32231 so that means spain had a greater proportion of women because we can see spain has 0 0.36 as the proportion that's the answer let's go to question 26 this chart shows the ages of 100 people in seven age groups as given here Find the age group that includes the median age. So the median is equal to 100 plus 1 by 2, which is equal to the 50.5 or the 50th and 51st ages. So in this, we have 20 done and then 25. So the cumulative frequency will be 20, 45, 55, and wait, we got above 50 and 51. So in this age group, we will get 50 and 51. And that age group is 35 to 40, since it starts in the middle of 30 to 40 and ends at 40. So 35 to 40 is the age group, which includes median. That's the answer. And with that, I come to the end of my paper. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel, Share this video with your friends and family and comment on how you think this video was and how we could improve our channel. With that, it's me, Sanjay Rasu, signing out. Thank you. Bye.